Hello, everyone. I'm Vidya Ganesan. I'm managing partner of McKinsey's Kuala Lumpur office based in Malaysia. I'm originally uh, from India, studied in the US and the UK, lived in Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka. So basically a bit of a confused, uh, but happily confused global citizen, if you will. Um, in terms of what I do in the field of AI, for those of you who may not be familiar with what McKinsey and Company does, McKinsey and Company is a hundred year old uh, strategy consulting firm. So we started off helping companies, uh, primarily businesses, solve their most thorny, difficult problems by helping them give a piece of strategy, right? Examples of problems I've worked on. For example, help a telco develop an AI-based agri-tech app that helps farmers, smallholder farmers, double their agricultural productivity, double the incomes that they collect, and almost cut off the middleman, if you will. That is one of the most impactful projects I've worked on. Yet another is working with a remote rural state in Malaysia to connect a few hundred thousand households to clean drinking water using AI-driven mapping of the remote rural areas. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer by training, but honestly, that is not what sparked my interest in AI. What sparked my interest in AI was the potential for impact that I saw that it could have at almost every one of the clients that I serve. The first one that I saw where there was opportunity for impact at scale was one of my apparel manufacturer clients who would call themselves, hey, we are no more than a tailor shop, right? What's the role of AI in a tailor shop? We help predict DIFOT failures. DIFOT is delivery in full on time, which is super important to the brands that they serve. Now, with this AI-driven model, we were able to predict DIFOT failures a couple of months in advance with a 90 plus percent accuracy and actually prevent them, which improved significantly the reliability of this manufacturer as one example. A second one that is very dear to my heart is one that matches the best team member on the shop floor to the best skill and almost says, okay, Vidya, you are good at embroidery, but you're actually not good at all at sewing pockets, for example, right? Also to say, Vidya, it's been four months since you did any embroidery. You actually need to go for a two-day retraining before you pick up this next job. And by doing so, you're not only going to improve the productivity of the factory, but my own bonus as Vidya, uh, who is working on the shop floor is going to significantly improve. Honestly, the hunger for impact uh, in companies, in societies, in communities, in countries that AI can have, right? That's really what got me into this uh, space. Of course, the journey is not all rosy. I would be lying to you if I said there is absolutely no challenge at all, right? I would say upon reflection, one of my biggest challenges is being the only woman in the meeting room, the only woman at the table, the only woman in a boardroom when it comes to AI-driven agenda, right? This is primarily because women are massively underrepresented in leadership roles in general in the corporate world, but more so in AI. Now, there's many, many reasons that uh, get in the way. One is women, our own bias against what we are capable of doing, not seeing enough role models, like I said, being the only woman in the boardroom and therefore having many questions on, am I really going to add value by making this next comment and checking ourselves much more than we should? And of course, women have uh, the disproportionate burden of whether it's childcare, care for family members, what we call the unpaid homework, which is super important for families and for societies. Right now, this is a combination of reasons why you find yourself many a time as being the only woman at the table, in the meeting room, in the boardroom, right? My invitation to you all would be to, to overcome that in terms of what would be a couple of micro habits, things that I did, right? One is I dispel this internal voice that is telling myself, gosh, you need to have the next Einstein-like earth-shattering insight to make this next comment. No, you don't. When was the last time you heard a man in the meeting room make an uh, Einstein-like earth-shattering insight? No, most often progress is made by small iterations on each other's comments. So as a woman, don't undermine the importance of speaking up within the first 20 minutes of a meeting, because they say, if you do not do that, chances are you may never speak up in the entire meeting, right? And again, don't undermine the ability to add impact by just asking a powerful question to say, 
hey, why did you say what you said? Why do you believe X, right? Sometimes that is all you need to move a meeting in an entirely different direction. Right? Now, many of you may have heard of AI-driven, uh, data-driven gender biases, whether it is in hiring decisions. Amazon famously pulled back on an AI-driven hiring algorithm that was naturally favoring men, right? Guess what? Because most of the men in leadership positions, most of the leaders in leadership positions are men, right? So you just don't have enough examples of women who have succeeded. And therefore, what is AI based on? Training data, the bulk of which is successful men, right, in this instance. So that's why hiring algorithms have gender biases. Honestly, if you look even at healthcare data, right, how women experience, for example, cardiac arrest is very different from how men experience cardiac arrest, like what we see in movies, like the chest tightness, the falling off, the dramatic cardiac arrest is not how women experience cardiac arrest. It's, it typically happens in the form of indigestion type symptoms, but that's not well documented in medical data, right? And therefore, when algorithms are trained based on primarily male dominant data, we lose out on catching women-related symptoms. And therefore, the more women you have in the meeting room, in the boardroom, in leadership positions, we will naturally catch some of these biases and ask the right questions to say, where is the women training data? What's going on in particular? There's so much that we as women can do. And I would encourage all of us to focus on that, the glass half full, the impact that can be had, rather than on what's the barrier that's getting, the, getting in the way for example, of you being the only woman in the boardroom. 